Uh, the Atlantic Ocean opened up uh, several tens of millions of years ago and we've been drifting apart from America since then. Geology has a very strong influence on all aspects of uh, modern life within the geopark, life of people and life of the natural world. Sur le, le géotourisme a une, une véritable valeur extrêmement intéressante que j'appellerais très transversale, très transversale, parce que ça nous permet de d'abord raconter l'histoire de notre planète, passé, présent, futur. Detrás de este paisaje impresionante que tenemos detrás, que está creado y desgastado por el mar, tenemos una historia mucho más interesante aún que además nos permite entender muy bien cómo funciona el sistema Tierra hoy en día y cómo podemos hacer frente a los retos ambientales, como por ejemplo la extinción de las especies o el calentamiento climático que veremos venir en las siguientes décadas. An amazing geological story, 500 million years in the making. It's a story of molten rock and huge ice sheets and continents on the move. It's a tale of ancient oceans, vast deserts and huge deltas. Aruca é um geoparque mundial da Unesco muito, muito especial. Apesar de ter apenas 328 km2, reúne nesta pequena área da superfície do planeta Terra um conjunto de geossítios verdadeiramente relevantes para contar a história geológica deste nosso planeta, que remonta pelo menos até há cerca de 600 milhões de anos atrás e conseguimos transportá-la até aos dias de hoje, contando os processos geológicos atuais que aqui ainda atuam. The main geological characteristics of the Copper Coast UNESCO Global Geopark are the really well exposed Ordovician volcanic rocks that are seen all along the cliffs here as well as these Ordovician volcanic rocks, which are dramatically faulted into various different positions, we also have Devonian sedimentary rocks thrown into far different positions than they once were. These Devonian rocks tell us of a time when this part of Ireland was located where, near where the equator is now and was home to an arid desert environment. While the older Ordovician rocks tell us about a time when this part of Ireland was near the South Pole and was, was home to a variety of different volcanic activity and the site of major volcanic eruptions. This geopark is an upland area. It's lifted up by the Weardale granite beneath our feet. This is a huge body of magma which was injected into the ground around 400 million years ago. We have a wide range of geological features. We have carboniferous sedimentary deposits. We also have incredible mineral deposits, which have led to an incredible history of mining and human interaction with the geology of this area. The geopark is a layer cake of rocks, sandstone, limestone, shale, ironstone, and each of those different layers gives rise to a different landscape. It's a landscape that's formed by many different sorts of rock, from um, Ordovician and Silurian through the Devonian into the Carboniferous period. The bedrock of the area is limestone. It is carboniferous limestone. It was laid down in a tropical sea and we were south of the equator about 340 million years ago. And as you go from the bottom of the mountain to the top, you go from a deep water environment through to a tropical shallow sea, through to a tidal flat and then all the way up to a river environment. These folds in these mountains record an ancient mountain building event that happened 
almost 200 million years ago, 290 million years ago, when the continents were colliding to form Pangaea. Una vez que se abre el, el océano Atlántico, se produce el depósito de grandes masas de roca caliza existentes en este territorio del geoparque. Tanto en la zona interna o en la zona más eh, superior de la, del territorio, como en la zona costera, cual pues, se ve afectada actualmente pues, por los procesos de tipo erosivo que está ejerciendo el, el mar. Cuando el Océano Atlántico se estaba abriendo, un brazo de esa apertura del Océano Atlántico llegó hasta el Golfo de Vizcaya, comenzó a abrir el Golfo de Vizcaya y en ese fondo marino se generaron grandes surcos, grandes cañones, grandes cuencas profundas donde se depositaban todas estas capas. Poco a poco, por una decantación lenta de sedimentos, una encima de la otra, encima de la otra, encima de la otra, encima de la otra. La península ibérica comenzó a girar, chocó con el continente europeo y lo que hizo es que toda esa gran pila de sedimentos marinos se levantaran poco a poco, dieran lugar a los Pirineos y hoy por eso podemos ver emergido toda esa gran pila de sedimentos que durante 60 millones de años se depositaron debajo del mar. Las primeras lavas aparecieron hace 15,5 millones de años en el macizo de, de, de los Ajaches en el sur de la isla. El geoparque de Lanzarote y Archipiélago Chirijo tiene la presencia de un volcanismo histórico muy interesante. Tuvo lugar una erupción durante seis años que cubrió una tercera parte de toda la isla. No solo la duración, la, los seis años en los que duró este volcán, sino además la lava se desbordó y llegó a crecer un tercio más. Lo interesante también que tiene Lanzarote es la lucha entre la creación y la destrucción. La creación a través del nuevo volcanismo y la destrucción a través de la erosión. O Geoparque Açores é constituído pelas nove ilhas do arquipélago dos Açores, situadas no Atlântico Norte, entre os continentes norte-americano e uh, europeu. Seja um território uh, diferenciado, com uma grande diversidade de rochas vulcânicas, de estruturas associadas a um vulcanismo explosivo, de magmas evoluídos, siliciosos, quer também de um vulcanismo basáltico, más calmo, de naturaleza esencialmente efusiva. We had the huge ice sheets here about 20,000 years ago, they're at their maximum, and these uh, huge glaciers that carved over this surface and plowed off the surface, stripped off any loose rocks, carried them away, and then eventually the ice melted and left this landscape pretty much as we see it now. During this last ice age, around 10 to 12,000 years ago, much of this area, as of most of the Atlantic margin, the North Atlantic margin, was covered in glacial sheets, which slowly melted, pouring floods of sediment and sand, which make up the soils that cover the cliffs above us here. And because of this, these upland areas are cross-cut by gorges and valleys, which were carved out during the last ice age. Los glaciares se desarrollaron en periodos más fríos. Posteriormente, la fusión de esos glaciares, o el calentamiento que tuvo lugar en el planeta, eh, produjo un aumento del nivel del mar. Tenemos que comprender que solamente hace 20.000 años, en la última glaciación, cuando el clima era mucho más frío, el nivel de mar aquí en el Cantábrico era el orden de 100 metros más bajo que en la actualidad. Y de manera natural, en los últimos 10.000 años, ha ido subiendo y recuperando un espacio que es suyo. The limestone that has been dissolved by surface water, by rainwater, over hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years, and even to this day it's still being dissolved. Eta paraje honetakoak, geoparkearen barruan gelditzen den karsta oso berezia da. Kars tropikal itxurakoa da, Vietnamen eta ikusi daitezkeenaren antzerakoak. Baina da kars pinakularra. Eh, horrek esan nahi du, eh, azalera lau batetik garatutako karsta dela, dolinaz sortua, Eta erdian gelditzen dira almendiak, dira piramide antzera triangelua. Around about uh, 10 or 12,000 years ago, the uh, ice age left us and we've been warming up ever since. So the uh, the glaciers melted away. What the ice age did leave us with was a record of climate change. That's climate change in the past, 
But when we look at that today, uh, we can, it helps us to gauge what might happen in the future. When I was a child, the seasons were far more predictable. Summer was invariably dry over a prolonged period. Now, the past 20, 25, maybe 30 years, the summer has been unpredictable and generally wet. The effects of the changing climate can be seen as more and more violent storms are seen here every winter. These storms are causing ever greater coastal erosion and changing the shape and the relationship between people and the coastline. The geology has not just shaped the landscape, but it's, it's shaped its people as well, and it's shaped its people over two or three thousand years and more. People were using uh, raw materials that were at hand, so the rock of the country, principally old red sandstone, to construct their forts, their defended settlements. So the archaeology that these people have left us, it reflects the geology, they've used our geology to, to build their structures, most of which are now in ruins. Some of the archaeological monuments, they're built out of the local rock. So most of them are built from, they didn't carry in the rocks from anywhere else. There's a lot of rock here in the, in the burn that's available on the surface. So they just took those slabs of rock and built their structures out of them very, very directly. So all the rock essentially that's used for archaeological buildings comes directly from here. Humans have inhabited this part of the world for thousands of years. Uh, and we see that history across the landscape. Mining has been a huge industry within this area. Limestone and sandstone quarrying has been a massive industry within this region for hundreds, thousands of years. And you can see that in many of the buildings around here, many of which are made from local stone. And this was people in the late 18th and into the 19th century looking for mineral wealth. All of that industry is now gone. It stands now as industrial archeology span and people come to see it. It's something of interest. It's something from our past which informs uh, where we are today. So the links between people, between the geology and between archaeology are pretty strong. Il faut pas oublier que notre ensemble du continent européen est très lié par ces par cette cette histoire. Donc c'est aussi une manière de faire des liens entre différentes parties du continent. Énormément de légendes bretonnes sont liées euh, aux je veux dire les corrigans, les farfadés, etc. C'est lié à à cette notion d'ambiance, je dirais, très minérale, avec du végétal très réduit, des trous, des orifices, etc. Pour eux, toutes ces, ces légendes sont liées à ce qu'il y a en dessous de la pierre et de la terre. You have more of a, a connection on the Atlantic coast, from Donegal down to Kerry, along the coastline. So somebody from Kerry and Donegal, even though they're almost as far apart geographically as you can be in Ireland, probably have more in common with each other culturally and how they view things than somebody who's 20 miles inland who lives a completely different Baina itsasoan beti izan dia problemak arrain enpresioak zenbat ekartzen zuen gero sepatuko zizun bizimorua garratza a semiak eta gero eskondurintzanean semiak eta itsasoa zeuena ibate bakarrena izan itsaso dutia Bañani no que gusicha no le visimorua na ishono an semia que castea jutia. Eti castea junzan eta gero ya liorra gustatu sakon da akao geatu izan hora ta neu bakarri geatu nitzan. La época histórica de la erupción de Timanfaya en 1730-36 provocó en la isla una catombe, una una situación de de hambruna que hizo que mucha gente pasar hambre y tuviera la necesidad de emigrar. Pero la isla ha sabido sobreponerse a esos cataclismos y le ha sacado provecho a la geología que tiene. Ejemplos de ellos son las herias, que como en un terreno totalmente inundado de cenizas volcánicas, el campesino ha sido capaz de sacar de su, de su tierra unos vinos de gran riqueza. ¿no? Eh, eh, art production, no, no, azo, art production que trao, azo, uh... Où se pénètre Barzanchiste, archiste azo naturel très à Valou. 
Argoelenu à ce tuto. À changer Théo et Chistre. Argoelenu à ce grade, quand Argo, quand Archiste à ce grade, on a un et un juste et très en rue à Gandra Mouk. À ce on a pu illustrer puis qu'il y a un doigt, un doigt à ce prix Melin, à leur prix Pouner à Wallar. À leur sorte Juero, int à Wallar, à ce zo cause de l'amour en douard à ce point de révélation. Qu'est-ce que c'est le tourisme Qu'est-ce que c'est le tourisme avec quelque chose d'ajouté Ce que nous voulons, c'est que les visiteurs viennent venir et s'enjouer, mais nous voulons qu'ils comprennent un peu plus de choses sur le landscape et sur ce qui est spécial dans ce qui est spécial. Donc le tourisme géotourisme doit être le chemin du futur. C'est le tourisme qui respecte le landscape et qui respecte les gens qui vivent dans ce qui est. Nous, ce que nous voulons, c'est que la gens découvre quel est le message, quel est la histoire qui est derrière ces roches, parce que à travers de ce découvrement, l'expérience va être beaucoup meilleure. C'est un endroit où vous pouvez expérimenter la géologie, la landscape, la nature et la culture, tout en un jour. Geoparks are really the front line of geoscience. They're one of the few places where the general public can come into geology, they can learn about our landscapes, learn about our environment, learn how they formed and also learn how to protect them. What happens here is that it's got a visual impact and that's what initially draws people. So people come here for that visual impact. So while they come and they see it and they take a photograph, you'd like them to understand on a deeper level what it is that, that they have seen. It creates a feeling in people. It, it's, it's why people keep coming and people return to visit. They invoke a feeling in them, okay? But for us, it's about sustainable management of tourism. It's not just about getting people into the sites. It's about economic development for the local region. It's about sustainable economic development and how the region and local communities can benefit from people coming to that, this area. We want people to be able to come here and enjoy it and understand it because unless you can enjoy it and understand it and experience it for yourself, why should you care about it? Geoparks can help protect the environment by telling people about the importance of maintaining our ecosystem and how the current situation in which we live is a temporary one and the environment has changed many times over the past several million years. One of the things that we would definitely like to do is expand that kind of ethos at looking at these landscapes as important and vital to our existence. And geoparks are a brilliant way of doing that and I think that if we can spread that message even beyond geoparks into other areas that aren't included, then that would be a wonderful thing to do. Não vemos o património como algo estanque, vemos o património como algo ativo, algo que deve ser visitado, algo para qual as pessoas devem estar sensibilizadas e para que essas pessoas que nos procuram e para as pessoas que cá vivem nos ajudem a geoconservar este território tão importante que é o Aroca Geopar. Há muitas formas em que você, como visitante ao Geopar, pode nos ajudar a fazer isso. So reflect on it, think what you can do yourself as a small contribution to what we need to do together as a global group of people. All of our geoparks are linked because they all tell the story of the formation of the Atlantic Ocean. We think this is a special place and there are many special places along the Atlantic fringe of Europe. Many of these geoparks have got together to produce the Atlantic Geoparks route. We feel like the Atlantic project is a really good way of doing that and, and we're learning a lot from the other geoparks. It's a fantastic initiative in terms of attracting tourists into an area and also networking with other geoparks as well. It's a great way for us to showcase what we've got and to make comparisons with the other geoparks that we are collaborating with.